So I'm here with Ragnar Cruz, uh, co-founder of Smarto. Now, I've never heard of Smarto. Tell me what you do in the mobile ecosystem. We are a mobile ad, um, advertising optimizer. So what does it mean is, is we deliver ads for in-application or for mobile web to mobile devices. And we do this on a global base. So we deliver ads to our publishers, which are um, software developers who have apps on mobile phones or mobile sites um, in 215 countries. So you're kind of an ad broker on steroids, would that be? A... Yes. So, <laughs> yes. So we don't sell directly ourselves. We are on a network of ad networks. Okay. We have today 34 ad networks which are connected now to. And I understand that is often the question: What is an ad network? Yeah. yeah. So in advertising, um, it comes from the U.S. Ad networks do the selling of ad inventory. Meaning is, if you are a software yeah. developer, if you're a developer and you have a little app and you want to place ads in there, yeah, you sell it yourself, or you find ad networks who sell it for you. Yeah, and there are a lot of ad networks and also mobile ad networks in the market who sell normally in specific markets. So like in yeah. the US, in the UK or in Europe, yeah, so sometimes regions. And we have aggregated all of them. 34 today have about 15 more, I think by year end, we probably will have 40 connected, which basically means is every one of those ad networks will and is providing us ads, we then can give to our publishers and it's all done completely automated. Yeah. So we help our publishers, software developers, to monetize their content through advertising by connecting them to all those ad networks. Okay. Yeah. And, and presumably AdMob is one of those networks. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's they are the largest today. But there are some there are like three or four players who do about half of the size of AdMob and there are more coming. Yeah. yeah. So today we have thirty four really connected. And on our network, just to give you some numbers, we do about 3 billion um, last quarter, uh, last wow. months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, I think, good for the whole mobile advertising industry, uh, because uh, Google is the largest player in digital advertising. Mm -hmm. Now, when they move into mobile, it validates the market. Yeah. And ideally, what we all expect is, is that we will see uh, more advertisers now also addressing um, mobile, which helps everyone because we will be able to more and more have personalized advertising. Mm -hmm. So ads which fit to the profile of an end user and therefore being able to deliver a much more uh, targeted um, advertising, which means advertising can become more relevant to the individual user. There, there are several uh, factors, of course. We, first of all, do what we call cell site optimization, meaning you have, imagine you have a newspaper and you have some ad spots and you want to fill them and though you need to sell them. So the task here is, is to get the best price for any of those ad spaces. So we choose, we look at if an ad space needs to be filled from which country, which publisher it's coming. And then we choose in real time, which ad network is now able to deliver the best paying ad. Yeah. In real time. In real time. Plus, you need to consider that most of the ad networks have a fill rate which is between 30 and 50 percent. Fill rate means you ask them for an ad, but they might not have an ad. Yeah. There are ad networks who have a 10 percent yeah. fill rate, but might have a high price. What does it mean is, is you now you ask for an ad and um, you don't get an ad. So you need to have multiple ad networks connected. Yeah. So we look first for the best price and then we'll also make sure we fill the ad and we do this within a certain time frame because you don't want the publisher, the um, smartphone software developer doesn't want to have a long wait, wait yeah. time for any ad. So we need to within milliseconds make a decision there yeah. to what ad network has an ad available. That's impressive that it all happens in real time. Yes, and this is sell side optimization. The other side is then more and more the buy side optimization. Yeah, yeah. meaning is, is now finding for this a specific ad the right user. 
Yeah? Yeah. And so that needs to be more and more matched. We are a middleman there. And today, one of our most important tasks is, is standardization. Yeah? Especially yeah. mobile mobile content easily and mostly travels much faster internationally. So best example is iPhone apps. If you're in an iPhone store or if you're in Symbian, you easily have your user demographics in multiple countries. Now, if you need ads, you need to actually pull them per country because you don't want to deliver a, a, an English ad to yeah. a French person. Yeah. So uh, depending on which platforms we have on iPhone traffic, for example, in general from the apps, we get on 50 to 60 percent of the traffic we got on iPhone. We also get longitude and um, um, the uh, GPS information, yeah. sometimes also the reverse um, geocoding, meaning zip code, city, and so on. If we don't get that from the app, but just the GPS uh, coordinates, yeah. we do the reverse geocoding, and then we use that for targeting. Yeah. So that is what we sometimes get, not always, on iPhone more than we yeah. get it on, on other devices. We see in the future, we will get more and more yeah. of those this kind of metadata. And it's up to the application developer. It's in their interest to pass that information because the, the user gets better ads. Yes. And it's more interesting. Yes. So it's it's um, uh, to to do a better pe um, a matchmaking, but also to better optimize and get a higher price. You achieve a higher pricing through better targeting to offer advertisers a more targeted audience. Hmm. Therefore, you get also a uh, higher price. So it's in the interest of um, a publisher um, or software developer of apps to give us as much demographics or metadata okay. about this individual ad space or user information to yeah. get the best price. Yes. So what we are doing is, is we're, um, first of all, still enhancing our development. We are today about 40 people. We have 16 in development and product management. We hire more developers to cover also some more platforms with more SDKs. Um, but also we have um, offices and we open more offices and uh, to actually extend our international footprint. We already have offices in US, in Redwood Shores, where it's our headquarter, in Hamburg, in Montreal, in Boston, and in Singapore. And we will extend this to better serve and work together with our publisher partners and with the ad networks. Do you have servers all across the world as well? Yes, data centers. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much we have data centers in the US and in Europe, and we'll open a data center in uh, in Asia. It's all load balanced. Yeah. So yeah. basically, that means within fifty milliseconds on a worldwide scale, we're able to deliver you an ad. Yeah. Okay. So and therefore, we have a certain infrastructure also in place. It's more than doubling very clearly, uh, and we just had a round table and talked there about numbers and number of uh, apps grow and so on. And I think that if you see today iPhone apps, 100,000, the prediction on that round table, and we had from VCs to um, analysts um, together, they were saying 200 from 200,000 to 500,000 and even more on the number. So the growth there is already that high. It's doubling every year. I would expect it's even more doubling um, uh, that year because also mobile advertising today still when you compare to digital advertising and to all advertising is a smaller market and when it comes from a smaller base you easily triple or quadruple yeah, yeah so that would be more more the um, the answer and then it depends on do you talk about a local market or a global market we got some numbers about the UK market uh, which is a small base um, um, today Chinese already, China has already, what many don't know, a much higher base. Yeah. Still, for those markets which do a lot, easily mm. doubles, yeah, but we even expect more. The reason is, is that the volume goes up, but also the pricing goes up. You go to our self-service portal, you sign up there, it takes you a few minutes and you have a publisher account. And uh, then basically you can take certain snippets for our site. Or we have SDKs yeah, for iPhone and Android, we have an SDK. We used to have SDKs also for Windows Mobile, Java um, and, um, and Symbian. So the setup for that you get within a few minutes through our site, take the API and integrate it on the server side. Yeah. Yeah. What we've learned this is on software developers, one of the biggest problems for them is really understanding how advertising works and how ads need to be displayed within an app. 
Yeah? yeah. Giving you an example, if you have an ad space might be a little banner on top of the screen at a certain yeah. time, yeah, then you also want to give the user the possibility to click on it. Yeah. Because two years ago, a lot of the advertising was uh, CPM based, means only paid by views. Yeah. Today, it has completely shifted, and this on a global base. Most of the advertising today, when I look at the number, just pure numbers, mm -hmm. it's um, CPC based, so performance based. So yeah. someone needs to click. Yeah. So if you integrate an ad space, you need to also, within your application, make it possible that someone can click on it, which also means you need to display that ad yeah. and being able to display it for several seconds. Yeah, and we've had publishers, great app. And then there was an ad space and you looked at it and the ad was already gone. Yeah. Two, yeah. three seconds, no way to actually yeah. click on it. Yeah. That's learning curve. So the learning is give guidelines, show the ad for minimum 15 seconds, even if it's on multiple screens, mm -hmm. yeah, but just use the same ad. That also will increase the number of times uh, that users will click on it. So the performance is based on click-through rates. For a publisher, for a software developers, also for a Symbian developer, and we have some developers on Symbian. We have, um, now I must think about it, we have one of the largest Windows mobile developers, which is SPB Software. Yeah, I know them well. They have great apps on Windows mobile. They were doing really good business on selling their apps. Yeah? So for them, it was always difficult to make a move into advertising. But they also realized that often their apps are um, copied and people are using their license key. So there's a bigger number of users which actually have just copied their mm -hmm. software and they can't monetize on that. Mm -hmm. So now they're coming up with some of their uh, apps and bring them out for free and do advertising there. That allows them to have more, much more user, and the number is easily 7 to 15 times more, and then monetize through advertising. The question here is, this, does it work with every app? And clearly the, the answer to that is, is you need to know how many concurrent users you have. You need to know how often people are using your application. You need to know how many ad impressions are generated. So how many screens do you show to an individual user. Based on that, you can put your metrics together and calculate what's the revenue I can generate with that. Now, if you have this number, the ad impressions, then you need to look at in what country, because there's completely different pricing. In India, um, ad impressions are sold or clicks are sold for a much lower price to compared to uh, Germany or the US. Yeah. Therefore, you can calculate your metrics based on your users and uh, impressions and make a prediction what kind of revenue you can generate. Based on that, then, you are able to calculate, does it make sense here to offer this as a free application and make money through advertising? Mm -hmm. One of the concerns always which also comes is, is does advertising is interrupting the user experience? Is advertising bad? Yeah. Look, if you have great content yeah, and you give it for free, users will appreciate that you get it for free and will also accept advertising because they know you need to make some money to further um, provide this kind of content. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I'm a fan of the freemium uh, model, which means is offer your um, application as a free version, but ad funded. But also then, so if you have enough impressions per concurrent users and so on, offer it first free, but also offer an ad-free version, which is a premium version. That way you can combine this, this, this model. Yeah. So advertising is not bad. Everyone understands you need to make some money. Yeah. And of course, there are people who don't like advertising. I don't like spam. So I don't like ads at some time myself. Now I'm in this business, so I'm much more aware. So I appreciate free content and, um, and then I also accept advertising. Yeah? And mm. if someone doesn't like it, he can pay. If he doesn't want to pay, he's not contributing to what you are creating as a developer. Yeah. Absolutely. There are, there are a load of iPhone applications I've noticed that follow that model yes. quite successfully. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think 
Um, I know you, you talked about Symbian and you've been doing a lot on, on Symbian. I think that's important also for Symbian developers to, to kind of under, understand and understand this kind of matrix. There will be in the future several ways to monetize on, on the mobile content. Yeah? The premium version we already know. It has been there for a while. It's difficult from the value proposition to always ask a user to pay 20 bucks for an application. Mm -hmm. And I know that the, the $20 were always a kind of handango average yeah. price and so on. Yeah. And uh, now if you have a subsidized phone, yeah, then how much does an end user really spend on, on, uh, on apps? It's limited. Yeah. So give them the way to also work with, with a, a free version. So it's premium. It's free but ad funded. It's maybe trial period and then to, uh, to paid. We also will see um, um, digital um, goods. Yeah. So doing an upselling, um, it it needs a certain infrastructure very clearly. Yeah. But there there are more and more ways how in the future you will be able to monetize. And of course, a certain infrastructure there plays also a role. You need to be able to monetize then on a global base because if it's Symbian, a lot is outside the US. Yeah. And so it's a lot of emerging markets in Europe. Yeah. Um, and uh, to be then being able to, mo to monetize. But the infrastructure is getting more and more in place. And Smarto, and I hope now you and all your audience will know who Smarto is, is one of those infrastructure players who make it easy to monetize on advertising, through advertising. It's one API, it's one integration, it's one check, it's one reporting dashboard. Through our dashboard, for example, you can see how much money you make per month, per week, per day, in what country, with which ad network. We give you all this kind of demographics. Plus, what we're adding now is more and more analytics. Because what we also understood is it's to, for a publisher to better understand, does advertising make sense for me? They, we need to give them enough metrics so that they can better calculate. Yeah. So Symbian comes a little later, but we will announce sometimes this uh, month also um, analytics for iPhone, Android, Blackberry, um, what else, and Windows Mobile, yeah, and then Symbian to come might be that we are faster with some of the other platforms too. Yes, um, um, brand to the publishers. We are a business and we do business to business. Yeah? And therefore, as a business partner, of course, I want and would like to that every publisher, every app developer knows us and knows we are the address yeah. to go to monetize through advertising on a global base. Yeah.